Hi, I'm Anders Kronin-Jepson. I'm the CTO for the Intel RealSense Group. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about the stereo line of products that we have. Um, and in particular, uh, talk about some of the new features that we introduced this year and new products. We have the D455, and we have a bunch of new features that came out. One of the most powerful things about a stereo algorithm is, is its adaptability. Uh, this means that this technology, just like human eyes uh, for, for human vision, can be used in many, many different uh, um, scenarios and, and conditions. Uh, we can uh, see things at near range, far range, the, it can be adapted for short, uh, wide field of view, narrow field of view, and all kinds of different lighting conditions. It, it works completely in the dark um, or in, in the brightest uh, sunlight on the brightest beaches. Uh, we even have customers who've used our cameras underwater. So it's, it, very, it really is a very powerful technology that allows us to create products that uh, can be used for uh, many different uh, depth sensing applications. This year, we really took to heart a lot of the input that we got on our previous generations of cameras. And uh, we, we launched lots of new features and new cameras. Uh, the, the main one I want to focus on today is our new D455. Uh, so the new camera D455 is very similar to the 435, uh, but we've really taken all the, this input that we've gotten and um, taken it to heart and included it in this design. So uh, the, the left and right monochrome imagers have now been replaced by uh, color sensors. So they're uh, one megapixel color global shutters with the same 90 degree field of view. We've, add, we've changed the RGB sensor. The RGB sensor is now a one megapixel global shutter color uh, sensor uh, that um, matches exactly the field of view of the stereo sensors. Uh, we um, still have the same hardware time stamped IMU, and uh, we've increased the baseline uh, by two so that we can reduce the depth noise by a factor of two. The RGB camera is also much more sensitive than the previous RGB camera was. So taken all together, we now have a camera that's very well suited for motion. And that could be motion in the scene or motion of the camera. Um, the other thing that is important to note is that the RGB is now hardware uh, time uh, synced, uh, hardware synced to the stereo imagers, and it wasn't in the fourth. The D455 also comes in an, a module version, in the same way that all our other cameras also have module versions. What's, what's good about the module versions is that it allows our customers to have a path to mass production. Now they can take the insides of our cameras and uh, build them into their own IDs and their own systems. This is extremely important as you try to reduce the cost of your system as you scale to high volume. This camera works with the same great open source SDK that works for our other RealSense cameras. Uh, and that means that it makes it easy to upgrade to this camera from any other camera that you've uh, been using, any other RealSense camera that you've been using. Um, and uh, this SDK continues to get better. We've had amazing contributions from the community um, and we continue to expand our support for different operating systems, platforms, wrappers, including ROMs and even game engines like Unity. And our cameras keep improving over time. We, the reason I say that is that our SDK evolves, but also the firmware. We come out with new updates on a regular basis. Uh, and some of the updates that we've come out with this year include the on-chip cell calibration. This is a new firmware feature that runs on-chip and it allows the cameras, it allows you to monitor the health of the cameras and to almost immediately instantly improve the health of the cameras so that you can ensure that they're working uh, at optimal performance. Another feature is uh, something we call the GenLock feature. This, this is a feature that allows us to play very well with other cameras and in um, various different systems. So what it does is that as soon as a sync signal comes in, we can make our camera slave to that sync signal. It doesn't have to even be at a specific rep rate. You can send just one pulse and we can fire off a string of captures. This is extremely important for synchronizing our cameras to external sources and allows a lot of flexibility. 
another feature is something we call depth HDR. So if you have a scene that has both very bright areas and very dark areas, our audio exposure will generally um, tend to hone in on one of the two. Well, with the new depth HDR, we, we do multiple exposures of the scene so that we can combine the depth derived from each different exposure so that we can get a much better uh, depth map. We also have a new feature uh, that works for both the 435 and the 455, which is a high-speed capture mode. This allows the cameras to capture at 300 frames per second. The, the vertical field of view is reduced, but we maintain the same horizontal field of view. And then you can capture high-speed motion at 300 frames per second without increasing the bandwidth of the data. This year, we've also expanded the number of partners that we have that provide software solutions and middleware solutions. And it's all available from our website. Um, one of the things that we've developed ourselves this year is something that we call touchless control software. This is a really exciting uh, capability that allows you to turn any one of our cameras into, into a remote touch screen. So how does that work? When one of these cameras is mounted above a screen, uh, the onboard processing can track the depth of your finger as you're moving around in 3D space. So now we can take any screen, retrofit it, and turn it into a touch screen. The design premise of this was to try to create something that didn't require a user interface to be adjusted or changed, or for users to have to learn a new language, a new gesture language. So basically, uh, as you retrofit screens, and maybe these could be touch screens or non-touch screens, you can create touch interfaces that are now in the air. So as you move your finger towards the screen, you will see a round cursor appear, and this round cursor will give you feedback as to how far away from the screen you are. And then you can touch in air and interact completely in air with a touch screen. The tracking is extremely fast, uh, low latency, and the compute load on your PC is almost negligible. So now you can move your finger extremely fast and have it be tracked, and you can even sign your name. Thanks for watching. If you have any more questions about our technologies or products, please feel free to visit us at intelrealsense.com.